there will probably come a day when you need to configure your drive from the faceplate. So what we're going to do in a real short, brief discussion here is we're going to talk about the buttons on the face of a PowerFlex 525 drive. We're going to talk about resetting it to the factory defaults. There are hundreds of parameters in this drive. And if you can't get the drive to work right, it's very possible that someone accidentally or on purpose changed a parameter thinking they were doing the right thing and they messed it up. So trying to find out which parameters are incorrect by bruising the end of your finger on that uh, membrane keypad it might better be a good idea, if you can get the information to set up the drive, is to reset it to the factory defaults, get your nameplate information off of the motor, and some, maybe some information off the drive, you know, voltage and uh, what have you. Reset it to the factory defaults, then go and reset the parameters again. So let's talk about how to operate that faceplate and how to reset to the factory defaults. I'm not necessarily ready to discuss exactly how I built this demo, but I want to point out something. The, the drive comes with a jumper right here for safe torque off. I have rewired it down here to a jumper that's easy to remove so I can wire in e-stops and other things from another little station. Also, there is a jumper wire I believe it's yellow, and it jumpers between two terminals to allow you to run this from the faceplate in factory defaults. That wire is now over here. So what I've done is I've taken every single connection on the terminal strip and I've moved it down here to color-coded terminal blocks that are then wired to devices over on another training station. But I just wanted to show you that I the jumper is in there so you can run this in the default format and run it right from the face plate and the safe torque off that jumper is moved down to the bottom here to make it easier now the reason that I extend all the terminals out to terminal blocks is because I don't want the students using screwdrivers on these terminals because if they get boogered up then the the drive is at least the power head is damaged and that way if they're new with a screwdriver i know you laugh at that but you'd be surprised let them break these let them destroy these terminal blocks they're you know 40 cents a piece easy to replace the first thing we want to master is the use of the blue button. Five blue buttons. There's another one that's blue that's the reversing button, but the ones in the center. They have the up, down, escape, enter, and select. Okay, when you turn the drive on, it's going to go through a boot up process and it's going to scan through a bunch of settings. If you're a real fast reader, I guess you could read them to see if they're what you want. Once it boots up, it's going to stop, and at that point, we're going to well, at one point, we'll demonstrate how to reset the drive back to the factory defaults. But for right now, you've got an up and a down button. You've got an escape, a select, and an enter. The up and the down button are used in two situations. Both of them, you're going up or down. The first one is in a parameter list. Once you select a parameter list, then you can go up or down in the list, and then you hit select. Once you see the parameter you want to edit, then you can hit select. Or you can hit enter. Now, the select and the enter can both do the same things in some cases, but I would avoid uh, using either of them in that situation. I would stick to one or the other, otherwise you'll get confused when you're trying to remember later. So, the up and the down goes up and down in a list of parameters. Once you have selected a parameter, and now you are going to edit one of the digits, the up and the down is going to raise the digit from 0 up to 9 or down. So up and down the parameter selection and then up and down in the value. Escape is always the same thing. Go back, go back, go back. Whether you you pick the wrong parameter and when you're going to go back to the list to pick a different one, that's escape. Or if you start to edit a parameter and you don't like what, what you put in, you can hit escape and that will cancel the edit. 
primarily I use the enter button once I've changed a parameter and it's what I want I hit enter in other words to finalize it I use select to select parameters or to select a digit in the parameter and then of course up and down up and down in the list of parameters up and down in the value of a single digit and then escape is go back go back go back if you hit escape a bunch of times you'll get all the way back to this display right here this is the reverse button so if the drive is running and you've not disabled this in your parameters then whatever direction it's going when you press this it'll decel to a stop and then excel up to whatever your selected speed was in the opposite direction this is start so once it's all set up if you're going to run it from the faceplate the green button starts it and the red button stops it. The red button is also used to reset a fault. That's real important to remember because you will get faults that aren't really anything. There's nothing wrong, but you turn the drive off or you did something that faulted it and just pressing the stop button, the red button should reset the fault. Okay, so now let's initialize the drive or if you like we're going to set it back th to the factory default. You don't have to do that. But if you get confused, in other words, there's a couple hundred parameters. So how do you know which ones have been set and which ones haven't? So if you're doing something real specific, you want to reset to the factory default. To do that, press the escape button. It says twice. Okay, and that allows you to select a parameter. Then you, okay, see if you wait too long to press the button again, and that's because I'm talking, go up to P30. Once it started to flash B, we wanted to press up right away to go from the B group up to the P group. Now we want to select. Okay, and when we did that, we selected the first digit. The next thing we want to do is we can go up to 53 or we can go down to 53. In other words, we can go down through the bottom of the list, which goes back to the top. In other words, if you're on the the P30, which is the bottom of the list, and you hit down, it goes to P53. And if you keep hitting down, 52, 51, and so forth. So once we get to P53, we want to use the up down buttons to display a 2. So we'll let it get back there just so there's no confusion. We'll go down, see 53, enter. Now we want to go up to 2 and enter. See, it flashes, so we've got a fault, and that fault is caused by, see, parameters defaulted. Okay, so we're good. Now we can escape out of that and go back to here. we got a fault, so we can push the red button, and that clears the fault. We can escape all the way out to our frequency. So right now the drive is reset to its default values just for grins so you start of the drive and what you can't see is the motor turning but if I can speed it up we got it set for around 44 Hertz if I hit the reverse button watch the frequency goes down to zero at the decel rate and now it's accelerating in the opposite direction. I'm going to try to move the camera over to the drive, I mean to the motor, and you can see the coupling rotating. That's a coupling that I have attached to this conveyor to attach an encoder on for something else that I'm doing. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the reverse button so you can see it slows down, it's ramping down, deselling down, and then it reverses and it will accelerate up to the top speed again in the opposite direction. If I hit the red button, it'll decel down to a stop. Then when I hit the green button, Going the same direction again, it accelerates back up to the full speed. That's setting the drive to the default values, and you're 100% controlling it from the faceplate. So I'm going to speed it up. And you can see the conveyor moving a little. If I sat something on the conveyor, you would see it move. Whoop. 
Gone in a hurry. Okay, that was setting your drive back to the default configuration and explaining that you do need those two jumpers in there, the one for safe torque off and the one, it's the start-stop circuit that uh, you can hardwire in things and you need that jumper if you don't have those things wired in. And in the default mode or default configuration, you run it from the faceplate. So this is just the first of several videos on the PowerFlex VFD, specifically using it in a classroom. But all this information is excellent if you're a technician in the field, electrician. This is all good information. I'm trying to keep these short, so that's enough for this one. We'll be back. Probably the next one will be uh, configuring Ethernet from the faceplate. And there's many cases where that's the only way you can get things done. We'll see you on the next one.